we have been looking Sunday night at the issue of hope and the hope that we have. And we started by looking at all the different situations where, frankly, we um, tend to think maybe there is no hope and we give up. And certainly uh, situations where uh, the world wants us to give up, Satan wants us to give up, wants to say there is no hope, so why even try? Uh, but with God, is there always hope? And we've been looking last few weeks at, first of all, we need to make sure our hope is in God alone, right? Uh, we can get off track, we can get discouraged when we try to put hope in other things. Uh, but hope in men, hope in princes, as it says in Psalm 118. But we need to make sure that we put our hope in God alone. And last week we looked at how we should live in that hope. That hope that we have in God should impact our daily life, shouldn't it? Uh, we should live each day with that hope, knowing that God is with us, watching over us, providing for us, and all those wonderful promises of God to live in hope every day. This week we're going to look at once we have hope in God and we're living in that hope, we should then share the hope. This world needs hope. And they're looking for hope. They're looking for hope in all the wrong places. They're out there looking for hope here, there, and everywhere, thinking they can find hope and even putting their hope in things that will always let them down. And we need to be the ones to sit there and say, let me share the true hope in God. In fact, let's all go to 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. 1 Peter chapter 3, we're going to look at verse 15. And Peter, as he's writing to the churches here, says, But sanctify the Lord in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. So in this verse, basically, it assumes that if we as Christians, the children of God, are out there and our hope is in God and we are living out that hope every day in faith and trust in Him, will people notice? Yeah. In fact, that's basically saying people are going to come up to you. People will want to know, why do you have this hope? Why do you have this trust? Why aren't you freaking out? <laughs> why don't you have no peace? Why aren't you losing sleep night after night? Why aren't you worried? Why aren't you? Why do you have this hope? And we need to be ready to say, hey, it's because my hope is in who? My hope is in God who will never let me down. And let me explain my hope. Let me explain what my hope is. And that's what we're going to look at tonight. In four different areas, the Bible talks about the importance of hope and what kind of hope we have. And the kind of hope we have is different than the world gives, isn't it? Uh, the world gives a false hope. We have a real hope, don't we? So we're going to take a look at that tonight. Everybody start by going to 1 Peter chapter 1. So we're already there. I'm not going to make you leave and come back. I'm trying to be nice. 1 Peter chapter 1. We're going to start in verse 3. 1 Peter 1, 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to His abundant mercy has begotten us again unto a what kind of hope? Lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. So the first kind of hope we have in lively, there's another word for a living hope. We have a hope that is alive and well. We have a hope in a person, Jesus Christ, who is alive and well. We have hope in a God that is alive and well and powerful, right? Not only that, but we have a hope that is a daily hope, isn't it? It's in every moment of every day. It is never a dead hope. It is never a hope that will let us down. It is never a hope that will stop. It is a lively, living hope hope that we have. In fact, he goes further in verse 4. To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that fadeth not away reserved in heaven for you. We have a hope that goes on and on and on and that will follow us every day of our life and yield to an inheritance that is for how long? forever and ever, reserved by the hand and power of God in heaven. This is an important hope, isn't it? It's not a hope that fades. It's not a hope that diminishes or loses its power. It is a daily, lively, lively, living hope. 
that we have in God, of an assurance of an inheritance, an assurance of a place with God. Not only that, verse 5, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to reveal the last time. We are kept by whom? By the power of God. Again, a lot of people, especially other religions, have their hope really in themselves. It's okay, I believe in God, but I'm the one that's going to make sure I'm saved. I'm the one that's going to work my way there. I'm the one that's going to attain into it. My hope is really in myself. Is that a good place to put your hope? You know you. <laughs> How many times have you let yourself down? How many times have you failed? It's something we do. But we have a God who has what? Kept by the power of God, he has kept us unto salvation. So our hope is in a powerful God, a living God, right? That assures us of both an inheritance and of salvation forevermore. Verse 6, wherein you greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold temptations. The reality of the matter is, even though we are the children of God, we still may run into issues. We still may have problems. Our hope is not that. My hope is that I'll never have another problem in my life. That's not the hope. If that's your hope, you've got a false hope. <laughs> well, our hope is that, what, is it, what does Psalm 23, 6 say? Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That's our hope is that even in times of trouble, if we need to go through these things, there is a purpose to them. Verse 7, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perishes, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. It's a hope that even in times of trial, even in times of trouble, God has a purpose for it. Is that a good, lively hope? To know that none of this is in vain, none of this is worthless. Even Job and what he had to go through, did it have a purpose in it? Or was God just playing games? No, there was no game is being played. He did not just give over to Satan for no reason at all. There was a purpose in drawing Job even ever more close to him, right? And is that a good thing? So we have a hope, a living hope. In fact, look at verse 8. Whom having not seen you love, and whom though now you see him not yet believing, you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Should have sang that song, huh? Joy <laughs> unspeakable and glory. You just put it in your head. It'll be all right. But no, I mean, even this living hope, this real hope, this, this hope in a living God, it, we know that something better is ahead. We know we have an adherence. We know we have salvation. We know he walks with us every day. We know that even in times of trouble, he has not given up on us, that he's with us. It's a purpose to us. He'll see it through it. And therefore, we can actually have something that the rest of the world can never understand, which is what? Joy. <laughs> Joy in times of trouble, that God is still in control. And it's a joy unspeakable and full of glory, a joy that this world could never comprehend, right? A peace that this world could never comprehend. A hope that this world could never comprehend. We have those because our hope is in who? In God. Look at verse 9. Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. Right? It's salvation day to day. It's eternal salvation of our souls. It is joy, and even in times of trouble, it's knowing that God's in control in times of trouble, and the good times, even more joy, right? <laughs> That's what God offers to us. So when somebody comes up and says to you, why aren't you freaking out? Why aren't you worried? Why aren't you fearful? What can you say? Because I have a what? Living hope in a living God who loves me. Is that where your hope's at? It's different than what they have, isn't it? Where's their hope? Maybe in their money? Is money living? <laughs> breathing? Powerful? Fame? Is that a living, breathing, actual thing? No. In their cars and houses and prestige and power of this world all those things are not real are they 
They're just things that we give value to, but in reality have no value. They are idols, which have nothing, but we have hope in a living God. Does that make a difference? That's why we have a living hope, right? That will never let us down. Not only that, but let's go to Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5, starting in verse 1. Romans 5, 1 says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So he's talking to people who are justified, made right with God through the blood of Jesus Christ by that simple faith, right? That's what we are. So he's talking to Christians here who have something very special, verse 2. By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in what? Hope of the glory of God. Now what kind of hope is this? Verse 3. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation works patience, which is endurance, right? And endurance leads to experience. And experience leads to even more what? Hope. Again, this is kind of what Peter was saying about this living hope, that even in times of trouble, there's a purpose to it. It's a refining of our faith that brings us closer to God and increases our faith and understanding, right? It does all of these things, which leads to even more hope. Verse 5, here's the important part. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. It is a hope that will not let us down, will it? How can we know that? Because the love of God, His care for us, His unending love, we're neither distressed or sword or famine or nakedness or will ever separate us from the love of God, right? Our height or nep or any other creature shall ever be able to separate us from the love of God. That love is shown to us by His Holy Spirit. And when we know that we are loved, we have hope, don't we? Verse 6, For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Well, how do we know God loves us? He died for us, right? For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. You may. Somebody may out there. If somebody was truly righteous, it was truly a mis, m, misjustice. That's a terrible word. That's not the word I'm looking for. Injustice. Hey, an injustice. I don't know. <laughs> it was clearly an injustice has been done. This person did not deserve it. They are completely righteous. Maybe somebody would stand up and say, out of fairness, I will die for that person. A good person, somebody that helps the poor, that does all kinds of stuff good for this world, maybe somebody would say, I'll die for that person. But, yet peradventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet what? Sinners. Christ died for us. That's love, isn't it? That's unwarranted love. <laughs> That's amazing love. That's the kind of love that God had for us. That even when we were sinners, no righteousness in us, no goodness in us, no desire to know God, no love for God, He died for us anyways. That's why the hope that we have is a proven hope. Right? He has proven by His sacrifice that He loves us. He has proven by his work in our life that he loves us. He has proven also that he always keeps his promises. When he said, I will send one to die for your sins, he wasn't kidding, was he? When he said, I will send the Messiah who to die in your place, he wasn't kidding, was he? He came in and fulfilled it and did everything, even though he was treated so poorly by everybody, even the people he came to save, treated him so poorly. He still kept his promise, doesn't he? That's why our hope is a proven hope. Our hope is in somebody who always keeps their promises, one that always cares for us, one that always loves us, right? So our hope is a proven hope. In fact, look at verse 9. 
much the more than being now justified by his blood, which he gave just simply because he loved us, we shall be saved from the wrath through him. For if, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. There's another verse that reminds us that if he was willing to give his son, what else will he not be willing to give us? <laughs> he will always take care of us, won't he? There's always hope, and it is a proven hope, because God did exactly what he said he would do and demonstrated his love toward us and died for us. And having done that, he will do anything else for us that we need, won't he? So we have a living hope, a real life, everyday knowledge of a living hope from a living God. We have a proven hope, a God who has proven his love for us, and therefore a hope that we know is true. We also have in Romans chapter 15, let's run over there. Romans chapter 15, we're starting verse 2. We might as well start in verse 1, right? Why, why is it starting? Might as well start in verse 1. Chapter 15, verse 1. We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. This is a continuation of a thought in chapter 14 where we need to basically encourage and help each other, right? If somebody is weak, somebody's falling down, it is up to the stronger ones to help them, right? And bear their infirmities and not just to please themselves. We are a group, right? <laughs> I don't know, some people in this world have a hard time with this concept of society. That I, I will give up some of myself to help everybody else. Instead, everybody's like, why should I do anything? I don't know. No. no. <laughs> he says, no, that's, that's not how you do it, right? This is not how we get along. This is not how you have success as a group of people if everybody's just out for themselves. So we need to bear one another's infirmities, weaknesses, and not just please ourselves. Let every one of us please his neighbor for his good, to edification. For even Christ pleased not himself, but as is written, the reproaches of them that reproach thee fell on me. Isn't that what Jesus did? What if Jesus would have said, well, forget it. I'm going to do whatever I want to do. I want to do whatever is good for me. Was dying on the cross good for him? That was very awful. He deserved just to be lauded as king, right? He should have just wiped everybody out and said, I'm king here. Could have. But it was not good for us. Remember that love part? <laughs> that was not the loving thing to do. And we have the same example, verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the Scriptures might have what? Hope. We have hope because we can look back and see what people like Jesus did. What even people before him, the people in the Bible, we can also see bad examples, can't we? And all these things. Verse 5. Now the God of patience and consolation grants you to be like-minded one toward another according to Jesus Christ, that you may be one mind and one mouth, glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And this is a kind of hope. The hope he's talking about here is a unifying hope. A hope that brings us together. A hope that we all have in common. If we all understand that our hope for everybody is in God, doesn't that make it easier for us then to help one another? Because if I'm going to sit here and say, well, I, yeah, somebody needs $1,000 and I've got $1,000, but I need to keep the $1,000 or else I have no hope. <laughs> what did I just do? Showed my hope is in what? The money, <laughs> right? Instead of saying, hey, that person needs it, my hope is in God, their hope is in God, why can't I just go ahead and help him? Right? And we are willing not just on things and things of this world, but we're also able to give up a little ego. We're able to give up a little of ourselves. We're able to give up our time. We're able to get along of different opinions and different ideas and things like that because we're not so caught up in those things as our hope. We have our hope in who? God. Our hope for the future is God. 
not a political party, not a government, not a people, it's not money, it's not houses, it's not fame, it's not power, none of those things. Nothing in this world is our hope. Our hope is in God, so we should be able to what? Get along, sacrifice for one another, and help each other out, right? And give and be forgiving to one another. Because our hope is not in these other things. That's his point. And that we, this is, these things have been written to us. Examples of this have been written, haven't they? All you have to look at is the example of the Israelites. Did they have a problem in this area? Why couldn't they get along? Because their hope was in something else. The other nations, what is their problem? Their hope is in something else. And they eventually what? Fall apart. The church itself has had problems because our hope has been in something else. And when our hope is in something else, that becomes our driving force, and that's the thing that then splits us apart. I mean, I mean, there's always those stories of churches that have split over the color of the carpet. Where is their hope? <laughs> Where is their desire? Where is their goal? Where is their love? It, it doesn't exist, does it? But when our hope is in God, and that's the one we are looking to for all the important things, then all the other things do what? Fade, don't they? And then we can be unified in our hope in God, our faith in God, our peace in God, all the good things in God, right? And that would bring us together no matter what those other things are. Whatever the other opinions are or ideas or concepts, we can all be one of one mind, of one body, of one mouth, glorifying God. Because our hope is in God, right? That's the kind of hope we have. How about this world? Do they have that kind of hope? Oh, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. There's not a unifying hope out there, is there? And that's the funny thing. Even when we have a unifying hope, like patriotism. Patriotism is always a very popular, unifying, right? Unifying hope is in patriotism in the, in the country. What usually happens to that country? It usually loses, and then where's everybody's hope? <laughs> then everybody what? Falls apart, right? I mean, this is the thing. When our hope is in God, it does not fade away. It's a living and proven hope. Put our hope in Him, and that will hold us all together as one in Him. Then finally, let's go to Hebrews chapter 7. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 19. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 19 says, For the law made nothing perfect. The law. Now, keep in mind, uh, this book, while we're not completely sure about who the author or authors are, it's not written in here. We do know to whom it was written. <laughs> Anybody want to guess who? The Hebrews. <laughs> the Jews. Who put their hope in what? The law. <laughs> we have the law. We have the prophets. We have Moses who gave us the law. We have Abraham as our father, right? Our hope is in the law, and yet they're writing what? The law made nobody perfect. It justifies nobody. Nobody can stand up the law. There's only one who completely fulfilled the law, and that's who? Jesus Christ, right? He's the only one. The rest of us fall by the law, not lifted up by the law. <clears throat> so he says, For the law made nothing perfect, but the bringing in of a better hope did. So the hope we have now is a what? Better. How many would want to... Best? Only? <laughs> Only true hope, right? We can go that far, can't we? For but the bringing in of a better hope by the which we draw nigh unto God. It is by this better hope that we actually draw nigh unto God. And this is important because, again, we have the best hope. We have the only hope. See, a lot of people want to sit there and argue and say, well, my hope's better than your hope, and your hope's better than my hope. Well, that's just folly. 
There's how many hopes? <laughs> it's like there's only one way to heaven, right? Through Jesus Christ. That's it. There is also only one hope. That hope is in God. Hope in His truth, faith in Him, His grace, His mercy, His love, His work, right? The hope is on there. So it is a better hope. It is even better than the law, which they had put so much hope in. It is better than anything else we can put our hope in or when you're talking to somebody. Remember, this is all about sharing that hope, right? Find out what they're putting their hope in. I know when I have talked to people of other religions, that's basically where I go. I listen. And my basic question comes down to, and we use different words to say it, but the basic line is, what's your hope? What are you hoping in? What makes you believe that you'll have eternal life? What makes you believe that when you die, you're going to a better place? What, what makes you believe that you are good with God or you're right with God? In other words, what's your hope? And what can they offer that's better than hope in Jesus Christ? Nothing. So when they come and say, hey, what is the reason for your hope? It's because I have the hope and the only thing that's worth having hope in. Right? Now, when does the church get in trouble? When do the Christians get in trouble? It's when our answer is, well, my hope is in this or that or this. My hope is in the Constitution of the United States of America. My hope is in this country. My hope is in the right hand of this great government we have. My, my hope is in the military. My hope is in my family. My hope, what's the problem? If that's the reason for my hope, what am I giving them? Inferior hope. <laughs> False hope. That will fail. So this is almost the most critical of all. When people come and say, what's the reason for the hope that is in you? Their answer is, well, it's the only one. <laughs> it's the only true hope. Because the hope is not in me. My hope is not when I stand before my maker, I have done enough, I have given enough, I have sacrificed enough, I have gone to church enough or read my Bible enough to get in. Because my hope is not in me, my hope is in who? Jesus Christ. In his blood. And his sacrifice. And my hope is in his promise and in his mercy and his grace. What about day to day? What's my hope that tomorrow it's going to be okay? No matter what happens, tomorrow's going to be okay. My hope is again in what? Not in me. Oh, if the problem comes up, I'll figure it out. <laughs> I'll make it through. I'll, I'll do this. I've got the money to do this. I got that to do this. I got this. I got any problem I face, I can get through it because of me. Or because of my family. Or because of this. Or because of that. No. Where's my hope? My hope is that when I get up in tomorrow morning, who's going to walk every step with me? Who knows everything already is going to happen tomorrow? It already has a plan to get me through whatever happens tomorrow. <laughs> What about this world we live in? So many people worried about what's going on with this country, what's going on with this world, what next year, what's going on with the pandemic, what's going on with the economy, what's going on with the elections, what's going on. And we get worrisome and things like that because as if those are our hope. <laughs> Is our hope in the economy? Is our hope in the next president? Is our hope in the next Congress? Is our hope in our military? Is our hope in any of those things? If that's what we're telling people, then we're wrong. The reason I have hope is because of none of those things. My hope for this country, my hope for this world, is the fact that who's in charge? God in charge. So no matter what happens with the economy, no matter what happens with the election, no matter what happens with anything, I know God's in control. That's my hope. That's why I have peace. That's why I have joy. Because I have a living, proven, unifying, best hope, only hope. And that's why when people come to us, we should be able to say, why? What is the reason for the hope you have? It's because my hope is in God, who will never, ever let me down. Is that where your hope is at? In reality, that's what we say. That's what we believe in our heart. Let's be honest. Do we sometimes let other things sit on that throne of hope? 
and start putting our hope in other things. That's when it gets shaky. And that's when our also we become a dimmer light. That's when we don't have the answer that people need. That's why we need to make sure, as Christians, as the light of the world, as salt <laughs> that we are, we need to make sure our hope is always where? In God alone. And that we live that hope each and every day in faith, trusting in Him, living that in Him, and then go share the reality of the matter. The reality is, I have hope, not because of me or anything I do or anything I have. I have hope because my hope is in God. And it is a living hope. It is a proven hope. It is a unifying hope that brings us all together. And it is a better hope. One that actually works. Right? One that's actually real. Okay? So just remember these things. And put your hope in God alone. Each and every day. And then be ready. Be ready for somebody. Say, hey, what makes you so happy? <laughs> Especially around November something. What's the first Tuesday of November? Third, something like that? Because a lot of people are going to be saying, a lot of, oh, it's the end of the world. I don't care. I don't care who, which one wins. There's going to be half the people are going to say it's the end of the world. And what, Christians should be walking through the streets saying, it's a good day. Why? Because God's still on his throne, so <laughs> what do we got to worry about? <laughs> it's still a good day, isn't it? Because our hope is in God. Let people see that hope in you and share with them why you have that hope. Because uh, it's in a God, not in anything else. Let's pray.